Hey everyone, and welcome. So today we are jumping into a debate that, man, it never ends in the home lab world. When you're running Proxmox, what are you actually allowed to install on the host itself? What's okay and what's not? You've heard this a million times if you've been around sysadmins or virtualization for more than five minutes. It's the golden rule, right? The big mantra, keep the hypervisor clean. But you know, let's be honest with ourselves for a second. How many of us actually stick to that 100% of the time? That line between best practice and I just got to get this thing working right now? Yeah, it gets real blurry real fast. So let's get into it. Here's how we're going to tackle this. We'll start with that unspoken rule. Then we'll look at the two main camps in this fight, the purist versus the pragmatist. Then we're going to see how it all explodes when ZFS gets involved, and we'll wrap it all up with a simple playbook you can actually use. All right, so first up, let's talk about this fundamental conflict, the beautiful, clean ideal versus the messy day-to-day -day reality. On paper, the logic is perfect. Your Proxmox host does one job, and one job only. It runs your VMs and containers. Everything else, all your services, all your apps, they go inside one of those. But in the real world, it always starts with that little voice, right? Oh, I'll just, I'll just put this one tiny tool on the host. And suddenly, your clean, pristine hypervisor, well, it's not so pristine anymore. And that brings us to the first philosophy, the first camp, the purists. For the pros, for the seasoned sysadmins, this isn't just a suggestion, it's law. The goal is to keep that host absolutely, positively bare. And this quote from an admin who's deep in the trenches, it just says it all. Don't install stuff on the host. Full stop. The only things that get a pass are tools that are absolutely critical for the host's direct survival. Now, the why behind this is what's really important. It comes down to three huge benefits. First, isolation. If some app in a VM has a total meltdown, who cares? Your host doesn't even notice. Second, migration and recovery. A clean host is basically disposable. You can just blow it away and rebuild it from a script in minutes because all the important stuff is safely somewhere else. And third, and this is a big one, security. Every extra package you install is just another attack surface. So what is allowed on the host in this purest world? Well, the list is shockingly short. We are talking about tools to monitor your uninterruptible power supply, maybe a little agent that reports hardware health back to a Zabbix server, and maybe, maybe Ceph if you're doing clustered storage. That's it. Seriously, everything else is a big no. Okay, so let's flip the coin and look at the other side, the pragmatists. These are the people, a lot of us in the home lab world, who say, look, that purist idea is nice, but it's not always realistic. I absolutely love the honesty in this quote. It's just so relatable. It's that feeling of, I know what I should do, but convenience is a powerful drug. And this slide, this explains the difference in mindset perfectly. It's the famous cattle versus pets analogy. For the purist, servers are cattle. They're identical, they're nameless, and if one has a problem, you replace it without a second thought. But for the pragmatist, the host is often a pet. It's unique, it's been hand-customized, it might even have a cute name. You don't just replace your pet. So what does this pet server have installed on it? Well, usually a whole bunch of handy tools. Things like Sanoid to manage ZFS snapshots, net data for those gorgeous real-time graphs, maybe iperf3 to test network speeds, or even Tailscale for easy remote access. It's all about trading that future replaceability for convenience right now. Now, this whole argument really comes to a boil over one specific piece of tech, ZFS. This is where the purist and the pragmatist philosophies just crash right into each other. See, the issue is that ZFS is an amazing file system, and it's built right into Proxmox. And to manage it well, you need tools for things like snapshots and replication. And it just feels like those tools should run on the host, you know, right where the disks and the storage pools actually are. It really blurs those clean lines. And this leads to two totally different ways of doing things. The purist says, nope, the host stays clean. They'll actually pass an entire HBA, the disk controller card itself, straight through to a dedicated VM running something like TrueNAS. And they'll manage all the storage inside that VM. 
the pragmatist looks at that and says, are you kidding me? That's way too complicated. They just run ZFS and all its tools right on the host. It's simple, it's direct. Okay, so we've seen both sides, the two extremes. Is there a middle path? Can we find a way forward that steals the best ideas from both? Let's try to build a playbook. So here's a really solid rule of thumb you can use, a rule that tries to bridge this gap. You should only install tools that have to talk directly to the host's hardware or its kernel. If it needs to see a physical disk or a temperature sensor or a UPS, okay, it can go on the host. But if it doesn't, it belongs somewhere else. And nine times out of 10, that somewhere else is a container. Why containers? Oh man, because they are the perfect solution here. They are easy to reproduce, you can move them around, they are totally isolated and safe from your host, and the performance hit is practically zero. Containers are the ultimate cure for that I'll just install one thing temptation. This quote, this one's a little harsh, but it's so true. It gets right to the point. The whole reason you use a hypervisor, like Proxmox, is for that sweet, sweet isolation. If you just start piling stuff onto the host OS, you're defeating the entire purpose. You might as well have just installed a plain Debian server to begin with. Okay, so let's put it all together. Your five-step playbook for a clean, manageable host. Step one, be ruthless. Only install the absolute bare essentials on the host. Step two, everything else, and I do mean everything, goes into a VM or a container. Step three, automate it. Use a tool like Ansible or even just some shell scripts to set up your host. That makes it painless to rebuild. Step four, for ZFS, really think about using a dedicated storage VM. And step five, which is critical, your backups need to live on totally separate hardware, far away from any potential disaster. And that automation point, step three, it's the real secret sauce. Because without it, the temptation to just log in and apt install something is so strong. But if you know you can rebuild your entire clean host perfectly in just a few minutes by running a script, suddenly staying clean is the easy way to do things, not the hard way. And that brings us to the final question. The one for you. I want you to go take a hard look at your own Proxmox server. What is it, really? Is it a clean, sharp Swiss army knife where every tool has its place and a clear purpose? Or has it gotten a little covered in peanut butter from all those little just this once installs and convenient shortcuts? Something to think about. Thanks for tuning in.